Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to go through some rain barrel basics with you. Rain barrels are a great way to capture rainwater from your roof and store it uh, for later use. Harvesting rainwater in this way keeps uh, stormwater runoff from your roof um, from causing surface erosion and or sweeping pollutants over impervious surfaces like concrete and asphalt and into um, storm drains and our local waterways. Typically they range um, from 50 to 80 gallons uh, as far as container size goes and they're usually placed on blocks um, or a stand uh, so that you can uh, put a watering can or a bucket underneath um, the spigot at the bottom. So we are installing a My Rain Barrel. Um, this is a food grade, approximately 58 gallon barrel. It is upcycled. Uh, it used to hold Greek olives and uh, we're going to set one up at the store as a demonstration and tell you a little bit more about the benefits of rain barrels. Rain barrels are a great way to save money. You can reduce your water bill by using roof runoff to water your landscape or wash your car or do other um, outdoor cleaning like windows. Uh, the EPA estimates that the average homeowner saves 1,300 gallons of water uh, per growing season with a barrel, and landscape watering can be up to 40% of the homeowner's water use during the summer months. It's also a great way to reduce pollution and erosion from stormwater runoff. Um, stormwater accumulates soil and oil, pesticides, fertilizers, and other contaminants and carries them to other areas, including into our local rivers and streams. And uh, those contaminants can increase algal growth in our lakes and ponds and damage habitat for fish and other aquatic wildlife. Rain barrels can also be used to improve plant and soil health because rainwater is um, great for your landscape. It's highly oxygenated, it's free of salts, fluoride, and inorganic ions. Um, it really is the best for plants and soil microorganisms because it's naturally soft, has neutral pH, and uh, no chemicals from the water treatment process. It can be used on lawns, gardens, and indoor plants, um, also to help keep your compost pile moist. Rain barrels help you conserve water and energy. Um, you'll have your own water source in times of mild drought um, or watering restrictions, and you can hold the water and release it as needed. And uh, that also means that less uh, treated water uh, is needed, less water is getting you know, pumped into the storm water and sewage treatment facilities for processing. This rainwater is also a resource for washing cars, uh, windows, and outdoor equipment. It's free of calcium, chlorine, and lime, making it a great water source for washing things. It won't hurt paint or damage glass, um, and you can save precious tap water for practical uses like cooking and drinking. Rain barrels also help reduce flooding in your yard, around building foundations, um, and down into your basement by capturing that runoff and holding it and releasing it at a later date. It also helps um, with groundwater recharge, so you can use it for watering your landscape in, with a slow release of that water, allowing it to soak into the ground, recharging groundwater aquifers that supply water to our local streams and wetlands um, in between storm events. And they're a great educational tool. You can use them to teach residents and your neighbors, friends, um, about water conservation and 
how important it is for us to think about um, how we're handling our stormwater and how we can impact for better or worse our surrounding environment with those decisions. I also want to mention some maintenance and safety considerations. A full rain barrel can weigh approximately 400 pounds, so you want to make sure that it is properly secured and balanced uh, before filling. You want it on level ground, uh, level blocks, or a designated stand. Make sure the lid is secure and screened so that wildlife um, and other animals can't fall in. And you want to check the spigot regularly for leaks and re-caulk when needed. Um, educate your family and friends that uh, the water in the rain barrel is not safe for drinking and bathing. Um, and use the water regularly uh, to ensure that there's capacity to store water from the next rain event. Stagnant water, if accessible, will um, allow mosquitoes to reproduce. And mosquitoes need at least four days to complete their life cycle, often longer. So regular use every three to four days will prevent larvae from um, developing completely. So you can use a fine screen or cover, a coarser screen with decorative rocks so that the mosquitoes can't see or access water in the barrel. Um, and you can make sure to kind of pour or scoop out any water that collects on top and rinse um, regularly. And then make sure that you're keeping that lid properly sealed. Um, rinse off organic debris. Um, that also uh, will help. And uh, if you do find mosquitoes breeding, you can empty the barrel completely. That will break the cycle. Um, or you can use a half to one quarter of a mosquito dunk, and that's a non-toxic um, to humans and to animals. That's an option that's based on natural bacteria from the soil, BTI, that targets mosquito, fungus gnat, and black fly larvae. Um, it's different from the strain that's used to control butterflies and moths. So if you want to use the water for watering your pollinator garden, um, that is okay. And make sure that you know you're rinsing downspout diverters or other part of your um, other parts of your system regularly to remove organic debris. And then if your rain barrel is getting installed in cold weather climate area you'll want to drain your barrel, um, winterize it by turning it upside down, putting it inside for storage, um, and sort of returning your system to its usual uh, stormwater management so that damage isn't done to the barrel by uh, freeze-thaw cycles. To install your barrel, you'll need some basic tools, including um, a hacksaw or uh, tin snips, something to uh, cut into the downspout itself for the rain barrel connection. Um, a section of hose either for overflow or in our case we're using a um, catch a rain drop uh, water diverter. So that connects to the barrel, the overflow valve, and a one inch um, drill bit. Now a lot of rain barrels will come with these flex elbows that um, dump the water directly into the top of the barrel and that's fine. Um, they're just difficult to winterize. You're sort of left with that kind of open hanging downspout when you need to remove the barrel for the winter. So in our case we're going to install um, sort of an inline system with this rainwater um, diverter. So you can see we're measuring what height that needs to be at. It needs to, the hose needs to be above the level of the rain barrel. And we're going to uh, saw through the downspout where we had that marked.
And when you're doing this, it's important to wear safety glasses and gloves. Uh, the downspout metal is, is very sharp. Um, so do take care uh, during this part of the installation process. And uh, here we're just installing um, the bracket to help hold the remainder of the downspout because we'll be reinstalling that. So you put the um, catch a raindrop a rainwater diverter in, fit it snugly at the base of the upper portion of your downspout, and then um, fit the lower portion back into the bottom of that so you have a good inline diverter system and then that gets snapped back into the bracket for stability And then the nice thing about this system to winterize, you just disconnect the hose, put on the cap, and um, the water continues to flow. In this case, we have it directed towards um, what will be a native uh, flower bed at the front of the store. Um, but, but while in use, um, you attach this hose segment to the barrel, and that'll divert a portion of the storm water. It needs to flow down into the barrel. And uh, then whatever, you know, once the barrel's full, that extra water, um, rather than having to, you know, find a way to redirect that water, it's just going to flow down into the flower bed. Um, so that's, that's the nice thing about that, the rainwater diverter option. So we're just tightening the overflow valve there. Um, helps to use an adjustable wrench um, to tighten that by hand. It doesn't need to be super, super tight. You can do it with um, that simple tool. And it's important um, to really think about how you want your barrel set up. Um, get it in the right location on its stand as you're doing these measurements. And make sure you get the length of the holes correct. Again, you want that downward slope into the barrel, and you don't want the um, hose section to sag um, or have a kink in it. So really think about where you want that barrel to be um, at the end of installation, measure and cut um, that hose section uh, accordingly. And then, yeah, tighten the connections to both the rainwater diverter and the overflow valve on the barrel to make sure um, that stays secure. And then here we're just installing the screen um, over the top of this particular barrel. Um, that's important for keeping um, unwanted wildlife out of there. And then I'm adding decorative rocks to the top. Uh, just if this gets rained on or there's overflow off of the roof, um, this system will be uh, all, all set up and drain into the barrel. And the same goes if you're using that elbow connector instead and pouring water um, in through the top of your barrel. Uh, using these rocks will help sort of cover up that screening limit access um, by mosquitoes. And to end, I just want to share some thoughts um, about using rain barrel water in bird baths and to water um, edible plants like vegetable gardens, herb gardens, things like that. Uh, Everything I, I researched really said rain barrel water is not intended uh, for drinking or bathing. And so I, I'm not sure it's really appropriate to use um, in bird baths. Uh, if you think about it, 
roof runoff uh, may flow over materials like asphalt shingles, um, wooden shingles and shakes, uh, zinc strips, um, you know, just they're treated, roofs are treated with pesticides aimed at killing moss and el algae. Um, and, you know, also a lot of critters perch and spend time on roofs. Their feces can contribute to E. coli levels in the rain barrel water. Uh, some studies on roof water quality in rain barrels, um, but there's really not a lot of data. It's pretty limited. And so here are the recommended precautions I found um, I would say in using kind of both in bird baths or on edible plant material. Uh, it's recommended to not use it if the roof is made of treated wood products. Uh, you have copper roof material or copper gutters. Um, if the shingles have been treated with toxic chemicals to kill moss, um, algae, or uh, to prevent rot, and uh, also roofs with zinc strips. Um, it's recommended to dump the first flush. So that's the first uh, couple of rains after a, a dry spell. You could apply uh, that water uh, to the ground, but it's not recommended um, to use on vegetable gardens and the like. Uh, you can treat the rain barrel water with bleach to help kill uh, potential bacteria. It's recommended to use one ounce of unscented chlorine bleach to 55 gallons of water and wait 24 hours to allow the chlorine to dissipate before applying it to edible plants. Um, it's also recommended to water the soil and not the plants and the vegetables or fruit directly. Let the water percolate through the soil and get cleaned by the dirt particles and the microorganisms and then be taken up by the plants. And also just do good rain barrel hygiene practices. Regularly empty and wash the rain barrel. It's important to remove um, organic sediment that has collected um, and you can disinfect with an eighth a cup of chlorine bleach to five gallons of water or a quarter cup of castile soap and vinegar or lemon juice to five gallons of water and then uh, rinse your barrel thoroughly with clean water. All of those practices will um, help improve the quality of water in your rain barrel. And uh, just, just be cautious. It's um, a great source for landscape watering and the um, external washing um, practices I mentioned. I hope these rain barrel basics uh, are helpful to you and I hope this video inspires you to consider installing a rain barrel uh, at your residence or place of business to better manage um, your stormwater runoff, to use that roof runoff as a uh, valuable resource in uh, watering your landscape and uh, help improve water quality in your surrounding environment. Take care.